Welcome. This is the Life Habits Podcast series, and my name is Carl Vradenberg. This is the series that helps you to learn new habits to optimize your life in order to stay sane in this crazy world. This is episode number 55, and the topic for today is getting the job. This topic actually was suggested by a listener, a listener who is also on my Facebook page, and name is Jovan, and he said the following, You have touched on so many great and useful topics, Carl. I must admit, there are some podcasts I still need to listen to. I have a suggestion that could help with a future podcast. Maybe one on how to prepare for an interview for like a new career. How do you properly dress? What employers are looking for as a potential candidate? You may have touched on these areas in past podcasts, but I think these are good topics. Just a thought. Take care, Carl. So thanks so much, Jovan. Really great suggestion. And you're right, we have talked a little about career types of topics in the past. I think we did a couple of episodes way early on in the series on the topic of more generally career, career planning and the like, and career strategies. But uh, I don't think we've addressed specifically this question that you have asked, Jovan. And so we will do a dedicated session today on the topic of getting the job, I wanted to mention that, as often is the case, that the topics we're going to be talking about here today are, you know, relevant to the very specific situation of getting a job with a new company or organization, which I think is what Javon is asking specifically about. But it's also relevant to getting a different job within an existing company or organization, as well as any situation in which you're trying to optimize the way that you present yourself and in turn are perceived. Now, I also want to start as we go through this session, as we usually do, with some interesting and insightful ideas and thoughts from others that have done some interesting uh, work in this area, and starting off with some quotes from Norman Vincent Peale, who said, Believe in yourself, have faith in your abilities. Without a humble but reasonable confidence in your own powers, you cannot be successful or happy. Zig Ziglar said, your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. Yogi Berra said, in theory, there's no difference between theory and practice. In practice, there is. Bobby Unser said, desire. That's the one secret of every man's career. Not education, not being born with hidden talents. Desire. Abraham Lincoln said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. Confucius says, choose a job you love, and you will never have to work a day in your life. Dennis Waitley said, don't ever let economics alone determine your career and how you spend the majority of your time. And lastly, and very specifically to one of the questions that Jovan asked, Dan Zevin says, Never wear a backward baseball cap to an interview unless you're applying for the job of an umpire. So, interesting ideas to get us going on our top 10 list for today. Number one is prepare. One of the most important things about being effective in presenting yourself, especially in situations where you're going to be interviewed with regard to a new job, like I said, in a new company, or even in a change of job in your current one, or in any situation that you're going to be carefully sort of analyzed and assessed, is to really think through and prepare and anticipate what might happen during the session. And I would suggest that typical sorts of questions are also things that would be useful to think through and think about what your answers might be to them. And the kinds of questions, and again, they range widely depending on the person that's interviewing you, but a very typical set of questions that, you know, whether asked or not, would be appropriate to address in some form, but be prepared to answer these, are things like, why do you want this position? Think about it. 
I mean, think about honestly what draws you to this position and why you'd want it. And also, why are you the right person for this position? I mean, ultimately, if you think about the overall interview from the interviewer's point of view, think about what they want to get out of this. They basically want to determine whether you're the kind of person that would be perfect for the position they're looking for, and they're going to be asking questions to determine whether you're that person. One of the best ways to handle the preparation for that kind of a session is to see the overall interview from their point of view and then address essentially what they, you know, want to determine. So if you can discern what it is that the position, you know, is all about, then you can then uh, also describe what is uh, and what are the various attributes that you have that are ideal for that position. Another type of question that often is asked is, you know, where do you see yourself in five or 10 years? Also questions like what's, what are your best qualities and what are your worst qualities? Now, the approach to this stuff is to, to think through answers, to think through, for example, the uh, answer to the question of, you know, how relevant you are to their company by first checking out the company, or if you're checking out another part of another company or organization that you're thinking of going to, if you're also even applying to another university, for example, for a a particular program, and it's going to involve an an interview, you do the same thing. So you want to first, like I said, take the position of the person interviewing you, which also includes knowing what the organization's all about. So I would suggest you Google the company, go to their website, you know, really understand it. Try to get a sense of what their organization's all about, what kinds of attributes are important with regard to working there. Also, Google your interviewer. You know, depending on the kind of thing you're going into, they may well have information out there as well, so you can get to know a little bit more about them and what their particular perspectives are. It's really important, I think, to try to understand these fundamentals before you get into the interview. I've interviewed a lot of people and when they come in and they are well versed in, you know, what I've written and what my views are on various topics and have looked at my blog and I don't expect them, in fact, some of the time it's 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 kind of a, uh, strange if they come in and just sort of have those, you know, views and express everything and agree with everything I've said. Uh, that That's a little too over the top, but I definitely am impressed by the preparation that somebody's done in preparing for an interview that they'll be having with me to already know that the stuff that's publicly available about the kind of organization that they would be applying for and also the person that they're being interviewed by. So do your preparation, and that's a lot easier these days of being able to actually Google this information. And then also, you know, take the point of view of understanding what you understand the the company to be and what uh, the position might involve, and try to draw attention to the attributes and the experiences and the like that you've had that really map to those characteristics. Also, you know, when you get to ask questions about where do you see yourself in five and ten, to ten years, think through how that might be a time frame if you were to work in that organization, you know, where you would see yourself and what kinds of things you think would be great about having achieved in that organization that you're you're going to. Uh, I've had uh, interviews before with people where they ask her all the other questions. When I ask the question about where do they see themselves in five or ten years, they don't see themselves at the company that uh, they're, they're applying for or the organization that they're trying to join, which always seems a little strange. And it's also the case that if you get asked the question about what are your uh, best qualities and worst qualities, again, this is a bit of a weird uh, question to be asked, but the strategy there is to obviously reinforce your your positive qualities and where you're talking about sort of worst qualities. It's actually, you know, not a bad strategy to uh, think of things that you could still spin around to being positive about you. You know, a typical answer being, "Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm really just a bit too perfectionistic. I'm too, I get to a little too uh, motivated and and committed to an organization that I work for, and I and I'm, I put out, you know, 150 percent, so that you're you're giving yourself a an answer that is supposedly a worse quality, but it's one that isn't all that bad because in fact there's a positive spin to it perhaps as well. So that's sort of the approach to. Uh, 
to the kind of the preparation stuff that you do. You know, number two is to take that preparation and then practice. Practice your answers to the typical kind of questions. So, you know, get together with, you know, a friend of yours, somebody that uh, is willing to do this uh, with you, maybe a family member, and uh, actually just act out the actual interview. Uh, right from beginning to end. Do, do it as if it's a dress rehearsal. Uh, I've mentioned many times on a variety of topics that practice is key. We often don't pay enough attention to the need to not obviously be able to do these things just, ap- just, just without any attention whatsoever. We know that we need to, uh, in this case, take the information that I just uh, gave you and you do that level of practice, uh, that level of preparation, and now you need to practice it. So actually, do a role play. You know, actually have somebody ask you these kind of questions, answer those questions with your answers, in the way that you would actually say it. Don't don't say it as if you're doing it in the third person. Like I would say, if I were asked that question, I would say something like this. Don't like the, do it like that. Actually, do it like you're actually practicing a play. The other person asks the question, and you actually answer it as you would directly in the interview. Number three is dress and body language. So uh, Javon asked about this as well. You know, what do you wear? And my general guidance is to get an understanding of the organization or company that you're going to be interviewing with and get a sense of what their kind of dress code normally is and then dress a little bit uh, more formal than that. You want to err on the side of being a little bit more formal and definitely not be doing the opposite, uh, coming in more informal than the organization that is that that you're applying for actually has as their normal standard. You know, as the Dan uh, Zevin quote said, don't wear a backward baseball, baseball cap to an interview unless you're going for becoming an umpire. So just get a sense of what the right sort of normal level of of dress is at the company that you're applying for and just dress a little bit more formal, you know, than than that. And the other aspect of sort of self-presentation in terms of this topic, dressing is part of the overall appropriate uh, getting the right level. But uh, body language is also really important. And uh, I've said this in other episodes in the past on other topics. And this one is also really important here. That, And again, when you do your practice sessions as well, do this as well. So you're going to be presenting a person that you think that they would also like to see. So you'd like to come off being, you know, appropriately relaxed you want to make sure that you're sitting, if you're doing the interview nor- most normally in sort of an interview situation, uh, you want to find and sit where you're directed uh, to sit. You normally will be directed by the person that you're interviewing, or it'll be obvious, uh, but you definitely don't want to sit. For example, if you're too nervous and you go sit in their chair, <laughs> uh, that can be kind of uncomfortable and a little embarrassing. And so you want to let them take the lead on suggesting where you sit. You also want to sit in sort of a professional manner, meaning you're not just going to be slouching down and uh, sitting the way you may sit if you're watching a TV program at home. You're obviously in a formal uh, situation and being evaluated for a variety of things, including your body language. And so you want to sit up straight and not too stiff and uncomfortable. You want to be, you know, relaxed, but at the same time, just like with the dress code that I mentioned a minute ago, you want to, you know, have a, a posture and a, an overall approach to body language that is appropriate to the situation. And so uh, a lot of the time people will know what to do as long as you think about it and think, okay, you know, maybe I won't uh, sort of sit the way that I normally sit when I'm just hanging out with my buddies. So uh, so think about that as you go to uh, come into the room and, and the way that you actually handle your body during the session as well. As we've said before, it's as important as what you say. Number four, be slightly early in order to absolutely be on time. You know, the worst thing about an interview like this in any of the circumstances that I've described in terms of, you know, a new company or within a company or even a, you know, university setting is to be late. 
you know, one of the most important things, I think, of this kind of situation is that you want to look enthusiastic, you want to, you know, work uh, toward an impression that is a positive one, and there's no worse problem to be dealing with than to actually be coming in and having to apologize for not being there on time. Check out where the place is, go look on Google Maps, go look at street views so you know what the building looks like that you're going into, etc., and leave yourself lots of extra time. It's perfectly fine to be, you know, significantly early and then, you know, just to be around the corner at a coffee shop or whatever until it's your, your time to go there, because uh, you definitely want to avoid getting there late. And being there just a little before time and, you know, sitting there waiting is, I think, an appropriate way to show, you know, respect and show some level of um, appreciation for, you know, being given the interview and uh, showing appropriate, I think, perspective that, uh, that, that you're the kind of person that they would want. Very few uh, jobs that you'll be applying for will think that tardiness and getting there late is a real feature and that that's something that they would really encourage. So uh, it's, it's one that I think, uh, you know, some of the time people don't think about that. And, and I have to admit, of the people that I've interviewed, you know, that uh, get there to the interview late, you know, you got to have an awful lot of real talent to get beyond that to start off with a negative, you know, strike against you. Number five is to listen and think before you speak. This is also a really important one. This is one where you're typically a little bit nervous in this kind of situation. You want to make a good impression. And some of the time people will, you know, listen to a question being asked, jump to the conclusion of what it is that the interview is, a is asking, and just go madly and answer the question in the way that they think is appropriate. And some of the time, they haven't necessarily understood the question correctly, or there may have even been some ambiguity in the question that could have been clarified if you had said, no, is this what you meant uh, in terms of the question? Or, and you can get it clarified, and you'll actually you know, know exactly what it is that they're asking. And you want to essentially be thoughtful. And so... Uh, if there's a question being asked, it's entirely reasonable for you to just have a pause, take a breath, and think about the way that you want to answer that question. So don't feel an amazing pressure to answer questions very, very quickly. Listen deeply to the question being asked. If you're unclear of any aspect of the question, ask for clarification. Take a breath, think about it and then answer the question best you can. Number six is to avoid pat answers. Now, I mentioned off the top in number one that you really needed to prepare and that you needed to think through the kinds of typical questions that I actually also listed. Now, even though you now have answers to those questions and you've now also practiced them, you also have to make sure that you're not just doing the, the typical kind of non-differentiated answers, you know, and you can do deal with this in your preparation as well, obviously. So when people come and answer a question like, well, why do you want to have this job? Oh, I like to work with people. That's, that's such a pat answer. That's not going to differentiate you worth anything from anybody else. And that doesn't really say anything to the interviewer either. You got to be a little more focused than that. You really want to think through a deeper answer than the one that is just on the surface or the things that sort of give you a way as not having thought through it very deeply. If you come up with those kinds of answers, then you're not really thinking through essentially the, the, the deeper perspective that the interviewer is wanting to get to. Number seven is to stay positive and don't exaggerate. As I said earlier, and where we're talking about the question about, you know, your positive and negative qualities, and I talked about, you know, trying to get a, a positive spin on that answer, that's really key. You got to stay positive through the whole thing. Don't exaggerate, don't lie, but certainly keep the focus on the things that are the best about you. And while still being, if there's some uh, details in your resume, for example, that are honestly need to be there and that there was some, you know, problem that uh, you need to explain away, you, again, you want to be honest, but you want to have a positive spin on, on everything that's there. 
And so, you know, there's nothing worse than sort of getting really down on yourself. <laughs> and, uh, and I've experienced that too in uh, speaking with potential employees. Just state the facts, be honest, but provide a positive, you know, spin uh, on everything that you're talking about throughout the overall interview. And number eight is to be confident and enthusiastic. Related to that previous point, you now want to also make sure that you answer questions in a confident, straightforward manner that shows that you know what you think, you're confident about your past, you are enthusiastic about the position that you're applying for. The, there's nothing worse than somebody answering the questions and being factual and just, you know, really conveying a sense of, yeah, they're being compliant with answering the questions, but there's nothing that comes out of it that shows there's a real enthusiasm for trying to get this job. So, you know, I talked earlier about this notion of doing the preparation so you know a little bit more about the company. That's showing enthusiasm. That's showing some real initiative in saying, you know what, I really already know a fair bit about your company. I um, And I think that this is the way that I fit in to, you know, what I understand uh, the company or the organization or the school, you know, is all about. And these are the ways that I know that I can help uh, and these are the ways that I think that uh, your organization can benefit from having me uh, around. Again, you want to be a little careful not to overdo it because you'll end up just sounding really arrogant. <laughs> but you got to make sure you get the balance right and be appropriately confident and enthusiastic. Number nine is to be specific and give examples. Now, a lot of the interviewing techniques that the larger companies and I know uh, and other organizations do as well, is what's called behaviorally based interviewing, um, meaning that they will ask you questions with regard to giving examples of if your best quality you think to be leadership, well, just stating that isn't sufficient in this kind of mode of being interviewed, but instead they'll ask you for examples of what kinds of items or examples in your past actually show that you're a leader. Uh, so think through, you know, specific examples that are, again, illustrative of the characteristics that you're talking about, and also think through, you know, what some of those, you know, may be as well. So uh, try to uh, not be so vague as to, you know, again, not be differentiated from others that are being interviewed. You want to give the examples that will actually convince the interviewer that, yeah, okay, now I understand what you are talking about in terms of you having this particular advantage or a particular characteristic. Number 10 is to thank the interviewer sincerely. And again, this is part of the overall enthusiasm. You don't want to be pushy, but at the same time, you want to sincerely thank them for the time they've spent with you, that you're anxious to learn from them what the outcome is, and uh, then let them go through and uh, tell you what the next steps are. Essentially be appropriate in closing out, you know, the session so that uh, they will have as a last sort of impression that they have of you, one of a sincere, you know, handshake and thanks for the session itself. So that's the overall topic of getting the job. I think these are the key attributes and key advice that I would give in trying to do that well in the variety of situations that I mentioned that are relevant. And I wanted to just take a couple of more minutes and just highlight some of the feedback that we've gotten on the series from a variety of sources. From the U.S. iTunes store, Debbie wrote, Good and helpful advice, five stars. We often don't learn things like what is being presented in this podcast in school. These are very good life skills presented in easy to understand format. I really enjoyed the one on confirmation bias. I see that in myself and I'm trying to change it. Carl's voice is perfect for the lessons he is teaching. The pace and tone are perfect in my opinion. So many podcasters are rushed, breathy, or get off topic. This podcast is very easy to follow, and the length is perfect. Thank you, and keep up the good work. It's very appreciated. So thank you very much, Debbie, for that 
feedback and got an email from Sheila in the UK who says, Hi Carl, can't believe this is not your day job. You are a born natural. Thank you for giving us many wonderful podcasts. Please keep up the good work. Yes, I would love to have video podcasts. Kind regards, Sheila. Thanks for that, Sheila. And also uh, another email from uh, Fairy Wood who wrote, Carl, just listen to this, the Life Habits episode 36 on familial insights. I love what you are doing. Please, please do a video podcast. Keep up the good work. So there's some mention there of video podcasts. I think I mentioned a question about that many, many episodes ago and uh, haven't uh, pursued that much but have uh, looked at the possibility of doing that. I do video type work inside the company that I work for, and so may well go in that direction for at least some of the uh, episodes that we might do here, might do it on YouTube. I'm, I'm looking into it. Appreciate any other thoughts or suggestions any of you may have, what format you would prefer with regard to uh you know, video or just uh, continue on with the uh, the audio stream as well. So uh, give us uh, some more feedback on that. Whether you'd like to see some uh, some video versions of this of this podcast series as well. So that's the session for today. I'd like to encourage you to provide more input and feedback and any questions or any suggestions for additional podcasts. We've got a number coming up in the next while that will be with guests and guest hosts as we've done in the past. So I look forward to doing those and want to mostly thank you for your continued interest in this podcast series. And we'll talk to you all next time and bye for now.